Hey traders from around the world, what's going on? It's your boy Jeremy Alexander Newsom with Real Life Trading and it is indeed the 25th of April which is a Monday and before us lies the Super Bowl of Earnings, the week that Apple, Facebook, Twitter, Amazon and much more have earnings. So we're going to look at that uh, today, kind of come up with an idea and a plan of what we are expecting and what could happen. I uh, had a really solid meetup in Nashville just yesterday. So thanks for all who got a chance to show up. Derek, it was really good seeing you, man. Thanks so much for being there. You two stays. Uh, so anyway, really pumped about that. This coming up weekend, going to be in Denver, Colorado. I already got an email from a few of you mentioning you're going to be meeting up with me Sunday in downtown Denver. So really pumped about that. I'll be seeing you guys there. Really excited. All right, so let's look at the general market, SPY. Here's my analysis as of just Friday. My analysis is a Friday, a small evening star reversal. So here's the evening star reversal. This is really Friday uh, morning before market opened. If we open below or break the low of Thursday, which we did, likely we'll pull into the 20 EMA in the next few days. I still think that's what's going to happen. So the 20 EMA is about 206.81. There's a little bit of a support there. I'm not necessarily saying we're going to go down really strong from there, but something like that. And maybe we bounce or maybe something like that and bounce. I'm not entirely sure. But a lot of resistance up here on the SPY. A lot of people want to short the markets up here, and I'm not going to say that we can't roll over from here at all, but as you guys know, this 213, uh, 214 area is going to be a very, very strong support on the SPY for sure. Here's your Dow Jones, DIA, uh, hanging out, a little bit of a small bearish candle today. And here's the Qs. Qs are perfectly inside day candle, at least thus far. So this is a relatively bearish gap on the Qs. I'm not going to deny that at all. On Friday, as you guys know, very profitable day of day trading um, for us in real life trading on, and really just any tech stock works in the first few moments. So at this point, here's what I think the Q is going to do. This is just my guess. Something like this, this, and this. And I really don't think it forms head and shoulders and crashes. I don't think that 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 happened. That happened. That happened, that happened. I think we'll just end up doing this and then continuing higher. That's really my guess on the Qs. It, it makes the most sense to me. If we break 109.89, I'm going to keep my bullish sentiment as it mentions there. But again, Friday was a bearish gap. So if we break the low and really start moving lower, well, I just hope that I don't have to uh, grow Mohawk because that is the wager that I got on the 106.105 bull put spread expiring in May. All right, let's go look at a few of these gaps first and foremost. Let's look at Apple. Ladies and gentlemen, AAPL. So Apple is announcing earnings tomorrow night. So here's my plan and really my opinion on earnings. The numbers do not matter on earnings. They just simply don't. That's a fact. I have seen stocks have incredible earnings numbers in every category possible and gap down. I have seen stocks have terrible, deplorable, horrific earnings on all numbers and gap up. It really doesn't matter the numbers. What matters is the gap. It's all about that gap, about that gap, no candle. So on Apple, what's gonna happen? We'll find out. There's a really strong support here. We have a small white candle today. My guess is tomorrow we'll get a candle that looks like this. And then my plan will be very simple. If we open um, at about 103.64 to about 101, I'm gonna be pretty bearish on Apple for a day trade. I think we also could gap down to 99 to about 98 and I'll be relatively bearish if we open in there but then I will be looking to long Apple if we pull into 95 so this is kind of my long zone on a swing long trade second other setup would be if we open above 112 so that's about seven points of a gap if we gap above here which I don't necessarily think happens but if we do that would be a very bullish gap as well everything else on Apple probably going to be Yonville it'll be interesting to see exactly what happens but what's important to keep in mind is your weekly long to moving averages and that's what I'm basing a lot of my support on notice back in 2013 we got stuck in between these long terms for quite a while probably is what ends up happening again but overall I do think there's a good chance we could continue higher on Apple in the long term level we'll just have to see what we do up here because this is a very very strong, very strong support on Apple. And if we break that, likely we do come down to here where I'll look to buy the dip if we do actually make it down to 93 or so on Apple. Amazon, Amazon. This stock is uh, pretty wild recently. Here's your daily chart and Amazon has earnings. It did breach above the 100 simple moving average. A lot of traders traded very profitably on the exit on the uh, target right there on Amazon. 
bull pit spreads, iron condors, all that kind of good stuff expired last Friday. So as of right now, what's going to happen? Well, earnings are in a few days. I personally think Amazon will probably gap down a little bit and then trade up. So uh, last earnings, it gapped down and ran. The earnings before that, it gapped up, trade down, and then bounce. So I think we're going to gap down and then trade up. That's just my guess. I really don't know. The reason I'm saying that is because this is a pretty strong short-term trend right here. Very, very secure, strong pivot around 540. So as long as we open above 540 on Amazon, if we gap down, I'm going to be relatively bullish. If we gap down below there, yeah, it's going to get wrecked. So if we gap down to approximately 580, eh, I'll be kind of neutral. If we have a very, very small gap down, I'll be neutral. Uh, if we gap up, I mean, specifically, all in this area is going to be a really strong resistance. Unless we gap above 780, uh, really any gap up that we do on Amazon, I'm going to be relatively patient. I think all the investors who held through this slaughterhouse uh, likely are going to be locking in some profit if Amazon gaps up. So in a gap up on Amazon, I'm going to be really, really patient. Almost regardless of where it gaps, I will look and kind of expect for something like this or like this to happen where we gap up, trade down, and then end up bouncing a little bit. So that's my analysis on Amazon. Really quick on Google, I do have a wager right now on Google. Uh, there's the wager and I have to win that wager. This candle has to close as an inside day candle so far. Looking like that next wager, most recent wager is going to be just fine. Chipotle also has earnings coming up this week. Ticket symbol CMG. Ladies and gentlemen, check this location out on a weekly chart. This is an incredibly strong location. I don't know if Chipotle gaps up on earnings, but I would like to wager this. If it does gap up on earnings, especially if it can break 480, I think Chipotle is a great buying location here. Notice it has retraced from, oh, I don't know, $740. So we're talking, oh, I mean, a ginormous retracement, 61% retracement of this move right here, 31%, uh, well, right at 31% retracement of this move right here. So it's at a healthy pullback is what I'm saying. And it's also at a really, really good trend line and you're coming into some relative lows. So if we gap up, it's bullish. If we gap down, but very, very slightly. So if we gap down, but you know, stay above 400, we're okay. As long as we don't gap below 400. That's the strong level, 400, 399. If we open below there on Chipotle, I think we're gonna drop pretty fiercely overall. Here's Facebook, earnings coming up on Facebook. Ticker symbol FB, here's the daily chart. And as always, my analysis is pretty, the same, pretty much the same on Facebook. Longer term, buy the dip and hold kind of stock for a few months. Here's your exponential moving averages, looks good. And here's what we got, higher lows, relative highs. If Facebook opens above 118 on earnings, it is going to be $150 stock either in 2016 or 2017. It will continue running. A lot of bearish traders will be trapped on Facebook if it gaps up this week. If it gaps down, I don't really have a play for it at the moment. It just kind of depends on where it opens, I think. Um, here is your long-term moving averages on Facebook. And your long-term moving averages, you got the 100 and the 200 simple moving average is kind of doing uh, I think it'd be kind of Bible at the 200 simple moving average or this trend line. I really don't see Facebook gapping down too terribly far. So if it does gap down uh, at this particular point in time, I think it's relatively viable. I don't have anything specific on it at the moment though. So it'll be interesting to see exactly how that plays out. Ticker symbol G-I-L-D. Gilead Sciences, this was a profitable trade that a few of you uh, were able to take from just some of the analysis that we put together in recent days and weeks and months on GILD. Had a really good Bollinger Band squeeze uh, about a month and a half ago. So if we sc scroll back into here, uh, here's your Bollinger Band squeeze on GILD, right in this February, March level. And we were able to sneak a quick profit on the breakout. So we got in. Uh, bullish around here somewhere and exit around here. Stan held it for a few hours into here and a few other traders held it into the 200 something moving average. So for you, uh, for those of you on GILD, great trade. Again, here's the Bollinger Band squeeze. I'm gonna go ahead and get that one pulled up really quick while the other trades are loading. Let's hop over to Twitter, ticker symbol TWTR. And I don't think Twitter gaps up on earnings. Twitter is one of those stocks I am always bearish on. <laughs> so, uh, I will say the 100 simple moving average is coming, ladies and gentlemen. She's coming around the mountains. So the last time we just wrecked right into the 100. I think we do that again. Here's your higher lows. Here's your lower highs. And really any gap down on Twitter, I think will continue the bearish momentum. 
A gap up, honestly, will have to open above 1783, and if that occurs, it will be relatively bullish until the 100. Once it comes into the 100, I don't really expect Twitter to continue much of anything. I will say, for all intents and purposes, this is a higher low on Twitter. So yes, if it gaps up, it could run a little bit, but 2108 is going to be a brick wall, which I don't think it can break through. Um, here's the setup on GILD. Pretty much right about there. Uh, this is at least one of them. So that was your Bollinger Band squeeze. And again, you can see broke out and just trade higher. So again, that's posted uh, on our TradingView website. Well, not our TradingView website, but just TradingView in general. Uh, United States Steel. A lot of you guys like trading United States Steel. I'm very, very happy to see this candle right here. Pretty much United States Steel is going to be a pretty easy setup, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm bullish almost anyway at gaps. If it gaps up right here to 2082, this is a healthy pullback, and that'll be a very, very bullish gap. If it gaps down, this is a very, very strong bullish trend, and I would like to look to buy the dip on the gap down on United States Steel. So right now, going to wait to see exactly what it does. British Petroleum also has earnings this week. Ed Reed had a April week four put sale that expired profitable this Friday. Great job, Mr. Reed. A lot of traders have some shares on British Petroleum. This is one of the energy companies that I've liked and have liked for a while. Dean's in sh uh, shares. Uh, a lot of us are in a 35 May covered call expiring, well, in May, <laughs> third Friday of May, 10 cents. Very, very strong resistance here on British Petroleum. So if it can open above 33, I think BP is head for the hills and likely continues a little bit higher. If it gaps down, as long as it stays above 26.87, call it 27 bucks, I'll be bullish to neutral, buy the dip, buy low, sell high on British Petroleum. UPS also has earnings this week. Ladies and gentlemen, here's my analysis on UPS as of the 31st of March. UPS will pull back or consolidate here. 31st of March was right there. There's the pullback and there's the consolidation. Put a check mark on that one for the win list. So at this particular point in time, what I think is going to happen on UPS, here's the weekly chart on UPS. Again, that did happen. And uh, you have a very, very strong resistance area where we are on UPS. So if it gaps down, I'm going to be relatively bearish on UPS. I don't know what happens, but I would be likely slightly bearish until about 94 bucks uh, on UPS. Then, granted, if it gaps up above 107.50, Man, what can Brown do for you? Probably make you a little bit of green. That one probably will continue higher. And last but not least, First Solar. First Solar, I am a relatively bearish on, just slightly. Had a really nice bearish retest gap right here. Here's the drawing, meaning I wanted a rotational wave up and then a rollover. So far, that looks good. And I would like to pick up some shares on First Solar down here at 50. I don't know if we get down there or not. We don't necessarily have to, but my target one from this bearish move is 57.92, so we might get into there. Uh, here's your long-term moving averages on First Solar, and again, the 200 symbol is going to be a very, very strong area. So I don't necessarily think that we have to get to 50, but on a longer level on First Solar, let me come back out here to a weekly chart. You can see here's the 100 and here's the 200. So really, that's what I'm basing my targets off on is the 100 simple on a weekly and the 200 simple moving average on a weekly. So what will First Solar do? Don't know, but it's pretty volatile on earnings usually. If it gets down to this trend line, aka the 200 simple moving average, that would look viable, buy the dip, and trade it back up into 70. We'll see what happens on First Solar. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching this real life stock review. I absolutely appreciate your time. Thanks for your subscriptions. Thanks for your kind comments, your tweets, your emails, your Facebook posts. You guys are incredible. I'm excited about continuing the growth of real life trading. Only amazing things to come down the line. Don't you guys worry. I will see you Wednesday in your next real life stock review. And until then, remember, love life, live life, and trade it. See you.